Hey guys, it's Leifi, back with another two solo dungeon builds for you to try out. This time with an ice and fire team, but without the dragons and countless betrayals. Oh wait, this was for Albion, right? Uh, even more betrayals. In this video I will be covering the one-handed frost staff and the great fire staff for solo dungeons, along with additional options in weapons and armors for these builds if you want to change things up. In between my last video and this one, unfortunately I haven't become a solo dungeon build guru yet. So for that I still have to share the disclaimer that the information I share is based on my personal experience and preferences. You might have better builds for these weapons or other weapons for solo dungeons. If you do, please share them in the comments below and maybe I'll test out your build and cover it in one of my next videos. If you like the content I make, make sure to like, subscribe and turn on notifications. You are also welcome to join the Levy Discord server, which is a platform with a bunch of kind and helpful people to tend to your Albion questions and needs. Thanks for all the waves since my last upload. I already feel less lonely in these quarantine times. I even managed to kidnap a waving Pikachu, which has become a nice addition to the Discord server list of emojis. Let's move on to the builds. The first build in this video features the one-handed frost staff together with the scholar cowl, scholar rope and scholar sandals. For the offhand I use the tome of spells. As for the cape I use Morgana. For food we of course use soups for health regen and have the omelette with us as our pvp option. As usual you want a stack of tier 4 poison pots for the bosses and for pvp encounters either gigantify, resistance or healing will do. Very different playstyle from my earlier covered builds, yet a lot of fun as well. I really want to emphasize that this build from the get go shows the better you become at it, the more rewarding it becomes. I didn't have any specs in this build prior and leveled the Frostmage Mastery to 70 before starting my runs. Reason being, you want to have the third Q ability, Ice Shard, which unlocks at level 70. This also means you have to use a tier 6 Frost Staff or higher, so that you actually have the Ice Shard ability on your weapon. As for the Artifact Frost weapons, they have this ability at lower tiers. One of the Artifact weapons has it at tier 5, and the other two Artifact weapons have it at tier 4 already. Now for the build breakdown. Aside from being fun to play, this build is very fast in clearing and has good PvP potential. I'll go differently about explaining this build as there are a few mechanics you have to understand. This build is basically about increasing your cast speed through various passives, your offhand, rope and cape and eventually your food. With these increases to casting speed you want to spam your Q skill to kill the mobs. Therefore what you take on your W and even your E don't matter as much, which gives us room to take Frost Nova on our W which is a mobility skill that teleports you away and freezes everyone at your initial location. A very good skill for both PvE and PvP. Your E skill is primarily used to proc your Morgana cape, which increases your casting speed by 50% for 8 seconds, which makes for faster Q spamming. It does have about 2 minutes cooldown, so be careful not to accidentally waste it. Aside from proccing your cape, your E of course has a different skill based on which I staff you take. The reason I future the one-handed frost staff in this build is because of two reasons. The first reason is the skill on the one-handed frost staff itself, Freezing Wind, which is an instant cast AoE in front of you that damages all targets hit and roots them. This makes for great CC both in PvE and PvP. The Freezing Wind skill also has relatively low cooldown. As for the second reason, since the frost staff is one-handed, it opens up the offhand slot for the Tome of Spells, which provides cast speed reduction. The passive you want to have on your frost staff is Aggressive Caster, which is yet another casting speed modifier. Especially nice to have during the times your rope and cape are on cooldown. On your Skull Cow you have the Energy Shield, which you want to use for energy regen purposes or whenever you could use the extra defenses. On your Skull Rope you have the Speed Caster skill, which doubles your cast speed and reduces energy cost for 8 seconds. As you can imagine, you want to use the Speed Caster skill as much as possible. When you do, make sure you are not using it together with your cape, since it will reduce the effectiveness of the cast speed gain drastically. This is a very energy hungry build, which is why we want to have energy regen on both our cow and sandals. And for that we take the focused run on the scholar sandals to regen energy between packs and speed things up. On all three armor parts you want to use the cast speed passive, which for some reason is named concentration on the sandals and cow and named swift mind on the rope. Maybe it's an easter egg, not something I know. If you know why they are named differently, share it in the comments below. To change things up about this build you could start with taking a different ice staff. The great frost staff is a nice alternative if you want more damage on your E in exchange for the root and casting speed of your tome. 
if you wish to level your artifact specialization, you could take the Halfrost Staff, which is also one-handed, making it possible to wield the Tome. Ice Shard also unlocks on tier 5 instead of tier 6 for Halfrost Staffs, making the leveling of the artifact specialization cheaper as a nice bonus. As for changes to armor pieces, you could go with the Royal Cowl instead of the Scholar Cowl, giving you a skill that nullifies your energy cost for 15 seconds every 30 seconds, meaning half the time you basically have no energy cost. Although this is a really nice skill, the Royal Cowl tends to be rather expensive, and doesn't change that much about the effectiveness of this build. I would say it's a luxury item. The same goes for Royal Sandals, which will increase your damage by 20% for 7 seconds. It's a nice alternative to Scholar Sandals, that will speed things up a little bit, but once again rather expensive. You can also consider Mage or Cleric Sandals for an additional teleport. If you do swap out the Scholar Sandals for either of these, you will rely far more on your Scholar Cal for energy regen. If you don't have the luxury of specking Frost Staff to 70 and have to farm the fame manually, consider the Great Frost Staff with the How Frost skill on the Q, the Frost Pump on the W and of course Hail on your E. They should make for plenty of damage to clear your dungeons, although it won't be centered around your Q and it won't be nearly as fast. Once again, take the aggressive caster passive on your weapon. For your armors, stick to the initial false color set. It's time to leave the cold behind and move on to the warmer part of this video. The second build features the Great Fire Staff together with the Cleric Cow, Cleric Rope and Scholar Sandals. With this build we use the Tedford Cape, and once again, soups for health regen and omelet as the PvP option. As usual, a stack of tier 4 poison pots for the bosses, and for PvP encounters we take the healing potion. Where the ice build is about reducing your cast speed and casting spells as quickly as possible, the fire build is all about damage. Out of all the builds I have covered so far, I think this fire build is my favorite, even replacing my previous favorite, the carving sword. This fire build just feels very strong and I enjoy the playstyle tremendously. I had a couple PvP encounters while trying this build out and I just wished I had more experience and was better at playing it. In PvE it's very straightforward, whereas for PvP encounters you do need some practice with this build. This is definitely a build I would suggest to newer players, or anyone who is looking for a great build for solo dungeons. When covering builds for solo dungeons, I try to find a healthy balance between cost of build, playstyle, whether it's any fun to play, effectiveness and PvP potential. And this build simply gets an A plus on all of these fronts. Let's get to the build breakdown and see why that is. First of all, this build doesn't have any artifact items, therefore it is on the cheaper side of things by default. The Tedford Cape is one of the cheaper ones as well. This build doesn't seem to have any energy issues whilst clearing packs, but with more difficult bosses that take some time to kill, you might run into such issues. Good thing we got discovered with the Scholar Sandals. Other than that, the Q and E ability, together with the Tedford Cape, make for plenty of damage, and for this reason we can take a PvP oriented skill on our W, just like the Ice build. Starting with the Great Fire Staff, you want to have the Burning Field skill on your Q. Make sure that when you use the skill, the mobs stay inside the AoE for continuous damage. The burning field skill lasts 4 seconds and also has a cooldown of 4 seconds, so try to reapply it as it runs out for optimal damage. If you have difficulties with certain bosses, consider swapping to Firebolt for those fights. On your W you can take the Wall of Flames, which is great for two things. The first thing is PvP encounters. The Wall of Flames will fear any enemies that touch it. Keep in mind, you put the wall of flames slightly in front of you, so if an enemy is right on top of you and you use the skill, they won't get feared until you get them to walk into it. The second reason why this skill is great is because it can also be used to interrupt certain mob skills, which will make your PvE times easier. If you have difficulties with certain bosses, swap wall of flames out for any of the other skills with more damage. You can also run this build by replacing wall of flames for fireball permanently, which would make for even more damage and faster clears, but leaving you with no CC for PvP encounters. On your E you have the flame pillar, which with 10 seconds has a very low cooldown for an E skill. Together with your Q and Tedford Cape, the flame pillar should provide enough damage for your dungeon runs. Although it is instant cast, there is still an animation to it when using the skill. Keep that in mind whenever you use it in PvP. As for the skill itself, it is an AoE that does quite some damage after a short delay, meaning when using it, you also have to anticipate enemy movements to make sure you hit them. The delay is about half a second. The passive for the Great Fire Staff you want to take is Furious, which will increase all your damage by 10% for 4 seconds, every 5th activated spell. 
If you wish to run different boots with this build, you could also take the energetic passive to upkeep your energy, if you feel that's necessary. In this build we take the Cleric Cowl, which has the Ice Block skill that makes you invulnerable to all damage for almost 5 seconds. The great thing about the Ice Block skill is that it can even be used when you are silenced or stunned. A great helm for this build, both against dungeon divers and to make great big damage from bosses you otherwise cannot escape. During the ice block you can also wait for skills that are on cooldown to become available again. Make sure not to double tap the skill or to move as it will cancel your ice block. The chest piece is the cleric rope for that sweet 45% increase in damage and of course the everlasting spirit skill. If you get hit within 1.5 seconds after activating the everlasting spirit skill you will get the everlasting spirit shield. During the shield you won't take any damage and your own damage gets increased by 30% for 3 seconds. The better you become at playing this build, the less you will rely on the skill. And with that, saving the skill for PvP encounters. For the boots in this build we have the Scholar Sandals. Now I must say that this build was surprisingly energy efficient, and you can probably run with different boots. However, I do feel the focused run skill gives me that feeling of safety for the moments I do have energy issues, such as with certain bosses. It is also a good choice against dungeon divers. As for the passives, on all 3 armor parts you want to take aggression, which increases your damage. And to change things up about this build, you can of course take a different fire staff. The skills we use in this build can be found on any of the fire staffs starting with tier 4, meaning you can get going right away with any of the tier 4 weapons without any masteries or specializations. If you want to level your fire staff artifact specialization, simply go for the wildfire staff, which is probably one of the better fire staffs to have as an alternative for solo dungeons. A good alternative for the Cleric Cowl is the Guardian Helmet for more sustain. I guess you could also take the Mage Cowl if you want to kill bosses quicker. I don't see how you would benefit from any of the other helmets with this build, but of course pick to your liking. Maybe you have a hidden OP double everlasting spirit strategy with the Spectre Hood. The Cleric Robe on the other hand you can replace with the Cultist Robe, which is a far more expensive alternative. Since you regen health and energy with the Levitate skill, you won't need any other energy regen sources and will have sustainability covered as well with just one item. It is however being changed soon and from what I've seen it's being nerfed into oblivion. Moving forward the cultist rope will still be good for PvE, but not so much for when you get dungeon dived. To be fair it was far too strong the way it was. Another alternative for the cleric rope in this build is the mage rope, which has an additional 5% increase in damage and is good for PvP as well. Probably better to consider once you get used to playing this build a bit more. I've also heard of people using the mercenary jacket with this build, which is supposed to be very good for PvP encounters and sustain throughout your runs. However, you would miss out on quite some damage from the armor stats itself. Moving on to alternatives for the scholar sandals, you could go with any of the leather shoes for refreshing sprint, to reduce your cooldown slightly. You could also go for either the cleric sandals or mage sandals for a teleport or blink skill. I hope the coverage of these two builds brought value to you, and they are just as much fun for you as they were for me. Make sure to like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any builds you would like to share or see covered in one of my next videos, comment below. As always, I wish you good luck in your adventures, and maybe I'll see you soon.